Good afternoon everybody. So, today we're going to be looking inside this box. What is in the box? Let's find out. Well, if you've uh, watched, read the title of this video, you'll know what it is. So, um, it is an 8088 based mini laptop. Let's have a look. Alright, we've got some boxes. This box. What's this? What's in the box? We've got a what looks like a power supply inside a anti-static bag. <laughs> no, that's not too. What have we got? 12 volt, 1.5 amp. Oh, I've got a heap of these plug packs, so I wouldn't even trust this from AliExpress. So we will be replacing that. Because it's brand new and we're already replacing it, but I just don't trust trust cheap power supplies. This looks like a ISA board. <laughs> Two layers of anesthetic bags. We'll come and look at this in a second. Just want to get the star of the show. Who's this guy. What's that? Bubble wrap. What have we got in here? The book 8088 with OPL3. And uh, no, yeah, 887. That's alright. Ooh, look at this. In a bag. Book 8088. You know, a bad little sticker. Shame it's not metal or something, but hey, what do you expect? Alright. So, included, we get this little manual, which is actually in English. The um, other reviews I've read or watched say that you don't get an English manual, which is quite nice. I've actually already got this as a PDF. Um, there was a website, Ars Technica or Technica Ars or something, I don't know. And the guy did a review on this, which I'll uh, I'll link down below. You can go have a look at his review. A bit more elaborate than mine. Um, and he's got like, he spoke to the guy that made these on AliExpress. And he got hold of the schematics, manuals, BIOS files, even though um, I prefer to use Sergei Kisilev's BIOS, which is one thing I'm planning on doing. So, alright, let's have a close look at this thing. So on this side, we've got, I've already had a scan through the manual, um, we've got lights here, so apparently they, they flash, a bit of a strange battery, low battery, high battery system, they flash slow left and right when it's full, and then when the battery's getting low it flashes faster, <laughs> it's a bit bizarre, you'd think you could do it better than that, but it is what it is, uh, charging light, CF card, got a USB slot here, which is, you look at the schematics, it's basically the usb to isa card that's open source so all, all the, the this little netbook is basically a collaboration of open source projects a couple of them uh, i was gonna say a couple of them i have made but i haven't actually made the ones that are in this i've made the memory card um a couple other things the sound card there's a um open source what's the thing called when I mean, you know what i'm talking about it's like a sound blaster yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That sound card. I made one of those. So that doesn't... Yeah, anyway. Let's continue on before I keep jibber-jabbing. So yeah, this is basically just a USB port that you can plug a USB drive in up to whatever the system supports, which is 540 meg. Um, that said, I remember I used, it uses, runs DOS 6.2. I used to use a 4 gig 
hard drive under DOS 6.2. So it's been a few years. I'm a little bit rusty. Um, there's a there's a BIOS limit of 540, but I don't think MS DOS has a limit of 540 meg because I used to run a four ter like I said a four gigabyte hard drive on my Olivetti. But anyway, we'll worry about that later. So yeah, USB drive, CF card. Um, quite happy this one actually came with a 512 megabyte card which is a pain in the ass to get out you always need a oh geez, a screwdriver to pry it out it's ridiculous all right let's use back of a blade there we go it's still stuck in there it's like oh come on come out okay here's my first complaint the CF card is a pain in the freaking ass to get out. There we go. So it's the second hand one. Not that it really matters. 512 was nice. I think the first ones of these came out with much smaller drive. That said, I've been collecting CF drives for quite some time now. So I've got bucket loads of the things. The projects come up. Uh, at the rear, we've got a ISA bus that connects this expansion board. Nice addition. So you can add three 8 bit ISA boards, which we will if I actually get serious using this thing. I'll definitely be using that. Uh, power charging port, power on the side, and a headphone jack for the little Yamaha sound card that is in here. So it's quite nice. I'm not sure what games actually support Yamaha OP L3, so definitely in another video, have a look at what software we can actually run on this that will support that and in this little door here we have the processor which is not quite it makes this sit up properly i tried squashing it down earlier but when i was having my first look at it but yeah, i don't want to damage the board so i just leave it it's fine and the bias chip which i will be replacing I'll either reflash this one or i will be Taking this original one out, which is probably more likely actually, buy a new chip, program it, drop it in here. From if you look on Sergey Kisilev's website, he's actually um, made a custom bias for this little laptop, which is quite nice. So I'll probably load that on. And also, I want to give credit because this is basically a rip off bias. Um, the manufacturer of this in China just basically took Sergey's work and fiddled with the files a bit. Um, you can see there's uh, the link to the website or link below where I found all the files for this thing. It has that interview that the guy had with uh, Sergey, so I'm not going to go any further here. Um, it's also got a V20 processor. I think they go up to about 10 megahertz. So it's basically an 8088, plus it contains a few instruction sets from a 186, or it might be a 188. Either or, it doesn't really matter because uh, there's literally nothing that I'm going to be using that will use those extra instructions. And I may actually put an original 8088 back in here because I've got one and they're pretty cheap. You can buy like $6 off eBay. Just have that original Intel feel. And I can stick a Intel sticker around here somewhere. <laughs> and we've got some speakers. And we've got a small 7 inch screen. So yeah, that's uh, that's the little laptop. That's not bad. Um, so what do I like about it? I think it's cool. Um, I like these kind of retro projects. Uh, it's complete too. Like you, you pretty much just power it on and it up it goes. I've read some reviews that the screen is a little on the dull side. Uh, but this one seems to be not too bad. I mean, I, I don't generally use computers and laptops in high sun environments anyway. Um, the external ISA board is definitely a plus. If you didn't have that or an option to do that, I probably wouldn't have even bought this thing because if I haven't mentioned yet, no serial port, no way to plug a mouse into it, which is a real pain in the backside. Um, I've actually started looking around if I can create my own add in for this, whether I remove this soundboard or I know there's like a lot of spare space. It's all translucent, the case. <laughs> There's quite a lot of spare space um, floating around. Um, so whether I 
retrofit or make like a little custom board that can fit in there that's got a you know a serial UART and um, I'm sure the eyes of us be picked up at a few points either intercepting between this little sound card or the board at the back though I wouldn't mind having a mod with one of my mods for this I want to add a serial port so that's on my to-do list um, also on my to-do list is to add brightness control for the screen so there's online you can change the resistor value so I thought well you can just change it to a variable resistor I might just put the variable resistor controls I know somewhere on the side of the screen so that way you can adjust the brightness if you really want so that's a nice thing to have um, I think it's nice that it's got a 5 comes with a 512 meg CF card because when XTs were released uh, if you're from that era in the 80s, which I was a kid in the 80s, um, they had 5, 10, or 20 meg hard drives, which was pfft, not a lot. <laughs> but back then it was plenty. I mean, it was like, wow, a hard drive, you know. Um, that's, yeah, it's good that it's got 512 meg. That's, it'll probably be more than enough space that I'll ever need for this thing. Um, things I don't like. Um, you cannot charge it while it's in use. So this is not something I've tried. This is something I've seen from the other reviews of this guy so while it's charging um, you can't use it you have to disconnect the power to be able to use it which is a bit of a pain in the ass but uh, not a big deal apparently it lasts a few hours on that four amp hour battery um yeah the only other thing i kind of gets me about this is this they could have made picked a slightly bigger screen it, it is a little bit on the small side and it doesn't use the whole Lot, so we'll power it on. And have a look. Let's have a close look. Um, another thing too, while this boots up, I would have liked if it had a floppy controller built in. You can literally get single chip floppy controllers, so it would have been nice to you know, have a, a port along here with a ribbon cable where you could plug a floppy drive in or one of those. Um, like, I don't have one, but you plug a USB drive into it and you have floppy images on it. GoTech, they call, whatever they're called. But anyway, all right, so enough jibber jabber. That's just my uh, initial thoughts on this. So let's have a look at the software on here. Okay, so it's booted up. We're having a look at the software. So let's go DIR. Remember, uh, my first computing days were back in the DOS days, so I still remember most commands. Bring us back a few memories. So I've got a um, TC test TW UC DOS, DOS, Fox Base game, HD copy, PC Basic. Uh, CH375 DOS is the driver for the USB, I believe. Area 5150, that's interesting. Windows. Yeah, right, Windows. <laughs> I suppose Windows 3. Yeah, I think it comes with Windows, Windows 3. All right, let's have a look. We shall look at the games first. CD games. I'll oh, note too, the keyboards. Oh. What am I doing? CD, oh, game. Sorry. So it's got one game in there, has it? No, oh, it's... No lemmings. Arachnoid, ABCGA, and Duck. What the heck is it? ABCGA. So CD. We should try Leisure Seat Larry on here too. <laughs> Who remembers that? That was hilarious. <laughs> what is this game? Install. Opening. Lots of dat files. Incredibly slow to read the folder listing. Alright, let's, let's run it. Dot com. So I can't remember. Yeah. Up key work. Oh, yeah. Just right key. Next thing. So A, B, C, just run A. I don't know what game this is. Sega computer software. What game is it? 
1989. Oh, I have to take the screen. Nothing I noticed too, it's got a um, the sc default screen protector on it, but they've actually put the plastic tab under the corner of the bezel, so I'll have to carefully pry that out. Don't scratch it. It's taking a while to load. Does the volume control work? Uh, let's try it. Nope. Afterburner. Yeah, right. Oh, I used to play this in the arcades and I wasn't very good at it. I'm more of a strategy game player. Missile speed. Uh, anyway, let's exit those. Is that a crack? Oh, good, it's a scratch. There's a few scratches on the plastic protector that they put on it. Come on. Actually, another thing I don't like is the reflectiveness of the screen. I know most phones and laptops have it, but I've never liked shiny screens. I like the matte kind of finish. Oh, God, this is taking forever. All right, I give up. All right, so we're not going to look at any more games. This is just a quick taking a look at this thing. Um, so you see that it's got memory checking 640k so that's what DOS can use but I'm curious to know if this has actually got one meg installed because an 8088 can address one megabyte of memory uh, with it, the exception of an EMS card but that's different it has like a an area that it oh, what are they called it swaps memory in and out of that EMS so EMS memory is painfully slow but I've got an EMS memory card I'll show you in a bit but uh, in the meantime, yeah, I really should remember my terminology before I start recording. <laughs> okay, basically there's an area of in the upper memory above 640k that it pages in and out. So it'll request a certain area of the EMS memory to be copied into that upper memory area. So it's... Yeah, it, it kind of copies back and forth between like whatever in the one or two megabyte memory chips. So it's painfully slow memory, but uh, it was a way of adding more memory to these older systems back in the day. So we've got, I think there is... Uh, no, 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 test. Let's go CD test. D-I-R... Hardware info, here we go. That might tell us about the memory. Loading, loading. It's kind of funny, this is basically an XT with a SSD. <laughs> yeah, a lot faster. I, I do miss the old hard drive noise though, the, choo -choo 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 -choo, the old stepper motor sounds. It's like, oh, you know, the computer's doing something. Yeah. There's another thing too, like the, the stickers aren't even like straight, they're a little bit crooked. Uh, they do a slapdash job, you see they've um, on the side where one of the screws are, they've slightly stripped the head. It looks like it hasn't gone all the way in compared to the other three. So build quality on this is a little bit average. Yeah. Ah, what do I expect? So what do I pay for this? I paid US in US dollars, I paid 210 which in Australian dollars was 374 but that was with the sound card and the ISA expansion card. It was cheaper, but you didn't get those extras, which I wanted. And I worked out it was significantly cheaper just to get it with those extras. Uh, while that's loading, I'm just going to make a quick comment about the power supply. So this is the power adapter it came with. And I don't trust these cheap Chinese power supplies. Um, I've heard of them catching fire. And you look at them internally and they have, they're have very minimalistic. And I, just, I just would not use it. So I was looking at the barrel connector and I've noticed I've actually got a bucket load of those, these power supplies. And they're proper ones that are designed to run 24-7. They're designed to run routers. And apart from the little 
it's actually a lockable connector, but it's the same dimension, so I'm just going to file that off. And you can use that, and I recommend you do the same. Um, not use the power supply that these things come with. Uh, another note is when you use the... I hope this isn't frozen, it's been waiting for a while. When you use this add-on ISA card, you have to power it from that power supply. Uh, yeah, there's a power plug there. So you can't run this, like it doesn't get its power from the, the system. Obviously the power supply in the netbook, notebook itself isn't powerful enough to power itself plus potential ISA cards. So another thing I might do is... Oh, I think I could make an adapter, but you can't use this thing... Uh, yeah, with a charging... Like, you can't use it while it's charging the battery, which is a bit bizarre. This is still frozen. Alright, let's turn it off. Booting up. 640. I wonder if you type mem. I haven't checked mem yet. So, I mean, if there's anything you want to know about this thing, put a comment down below and I'll add it to my next movie. <laughs> movie. Video. <laughs> I don't know why I call it movie. Um, yeah, which I'll probably be playing some soft, playing some games on here. Total memory, yeah, one meg used. So I don't think it has upper memory. Which actually means I can add an EMS card that has that upper memory area and we can get some more. So you've only got 567 usable. Hmm. I'll have to have a closer look at solving some memory problems, I think. But, I mean, it depends. If it, if it runs everything I want it to run, it doesn't really matter. Let's go CD test. So it doesn't notice, it doesn't really warm up. Um, V20s, if you look up the specs, they use 360 milliamps of current. Oh, hang on, sorry, 360 or 660? I'm pretty sure it's 360, and an 8088 uses like 340. <laughs> so these old processors are like draw next to nothing. Um, and I think an 8087 draws like 2 amps or more from, yeah. What do we got here? We've got a, we'll just try and sys check. Sys check or speed sys? Sys check. I've got to remember that I'm, you know, literally running at like 5 megahertz. Even my first computer, which was a 486, was, uh, significantly better than this even though it's like the same DOS version come on man everything's so slow back in the 80s <laughs> cars were slow oh no they had some fast cars had some Nissan turbos and V8s I guess um, processors unfortunately I mean what's this processor late 70s early 80s so I shouldn't pick on it too much. It's like almost as old as I am. 40 odd years. <laughs> there we go. Got there eventually. Alright, what's it doing? It is an NEC V20. 8 megahertz. Industrial AT is the model. DOS 6.2. Only, yeah. Only 640k, unfortunately. They could put 1 meg in here. It would have been a bit nicer. Like how... It, it, I don't know. No comment. Um, CPU bias. CPU ID is not supported. IO. Com1. Bias reports only zero. And so how does it pick up that there's a Com1? How is there a Com1? Board rate two. <laughs> Paris, but yeah, I think that's something not right. Must be to do with the bias, not reporting things properly, I think. Can the IRQs are open? It's nice. 
Next drives. Uh, so it's frozen because there is no copy drive. Yeah, she's frozen. All right, I think that's all we'll look at for now. So um, I'll just quickly show you my memory expansion that we can use in this. Um, let's go take a look at that quickly before we go. Okay, so up here in my box of PCBs, we should have my EMS, well, PCBs. So I've got, so I got these a few years ago. I'm not even sure where I got them from. I, think I don't know if I got them from Australia or US. These are two megabyte EMS boards. So yeah, we can add two mega RAM to an 8088. And I also have a one meg RAM board. So this board isn't EMS. It gives the entire one megabyte amount to like an 8088. So I'd have to remove the existing memory out of an XT or that book to use this. But what you can do, um, I'm pretty sure, is you can use this to give high memory. So you can just enable the area of memory above the 640K to one megabyte limit, and you can load everything high. So, I mean, I need to assemble this thing anyway, but um, this was just in case I ever came across an XT board that had no memory. You pretty much just plug this in, and it will supply you with memory through the ISA bus. But if I really want, I can plug this into that expansion board and give us high memory and get two megaram EMS using these guys. So, um, yeah, that's that. So later on too, I'm going to take a look through these boxes. I've got, they're full of, one's got drives, one's got old school computer parts. As you can see, it's labeled there, computer parts. So in another video, we'll uh, see what cards we can add to this thing. But for now, uh, I think we'll wrap it up.